How are you doing guys? So in this video I'm going to share a few tips on how to use charcoal. Now, I don't proclaim to be an expert on charcoal. Uh, I've only been using it myself for about not even a year. Um, so, But I've had a lot of practice with it. This is one of my drawings. I used charcoal pencil for this. What I do like about charcoal, there's no reflection. Um, when you're using graphite and you get this shiny um you get this shiny effect when light shines on it whereas charcoal is not like that it's completely matte a lot of people say it's a bit messy it is it can be a bit messy you know just you know graphite won't show up but if you put this on your skin it's going to show up so it can create a bit of a mess but uh, there's certain things that you can um do that can stop that mess from happening so i'm going to share a few little tips with you so right, so this this one i did um a couple of weeks ago um i've got a few examples of charcoal these were these were charcoal drawings that i did on my um live stream so we've got george harrison um Ah, oh, George Washington, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, and Charles Darwin, I think. Uh, and I did this ball just to demonstrate how to shade and use charcoal. There's a few more examples. So, yeah, we all recognise these guys. We've got Einstein, we've got a better called Saul guy. Um, got, uh, I can't remember his name. I don't know who that guy is, I can't remember his name. A couple more there. And so the one that I've been working on this morning is well, I did a couple of um, drawings last night on the live stream. I was a bit late, I couldn't sleep, so I thought I'll do a check. I've not done any. I've been doing that many um, drawings of like cartoons and Simpsons and Family Guy. I've not. I've been staying away from charcoal and I've, I've really missed it. So last night I spent about um, forty minutes on this one and this one. These live last night. So there was a couple of images there. And then this morning I did this guy Mike Tyson on the live stream. That one took me about an hour and. 20 minutes i think so yeah basic tips on using charcoal uh, without creating too much mess well first of all i always start my drawings top left because i'm right handed so i'll hold my pencil usually if i'm doing detail work you have to hold it quite close so you have to get close to your pencil if you're doing detail work like the eyes now if you're doing shading then you're going to hold it further away because first of all you don't want to do a you don't want to press on too hard because it's going to show up as a really dark shade when you might not want a dark shade. You might just want to just rub gently. I'm using the weight of the pencil. If I just press down a little bit, it's going to show up a little bit darker. But I'm just doing little circular motions. So tiny circular motions. Probably can't see anything changing, but it does change eventually. So I'm just looking for that tone to darken up. And then once it darkens up a little bit, I could leave it like that, or I could use a blending stub. A blending stub. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, but just to blend it, just to soften those values up. Or you could use a brush. Brushing's it's a really good um, tool to have. You know, it's that really neatens the gets rid of that graininess that charcoal and pencil can leave so i'll give a few examples of shading basic shading so i'm going to use this big block so i'll do a circle it doesn't have to be a perfect circle so i'm not too fussed just a shading tutorial so with charcoal block so i'm just going to go around i'm going to create the light sources going in this direction so i'm going to shade in 
almost half of that ball. Oh, that's fear. So, so as I'm bringing it towards the light source, I'm just going to lighten my stroke. I'm not going to put as much pressure on. And down here, I'm going to press on a little bit firmer. So now we've got your brush, which again, it's a really good tool to have. This is going to get rid of those, that graininess that we've created with the charcoal block. And I'm going to pull, I'm, I'm basically collecting charcoal on the brush. And I'm going to use that charcoal now. Resting. I'm going to leave this area I'm going to leave a little bit there for the light source so you've got your direct light you've got a shadow line and if we just keep rubbing and keep rubbing and keep rubbing it does make a difference now, around this area, I'm going to take a little bit out because we should have a bit of reflective light in this area. So I'll take a little bit of that out just for the reflective light. So reflect, reflective light is light that bounces from the surface that it's sitting on, whatever it is that it's sitting on. So we need a shadow as well. I'm going to pull it across the lights traveling in this direction so the shadow is going to be it's going to be there and a bit further up and again get your brush just to soften the values so a lot of it's a combination of using your pencil then using your brush Of pencil brushwork, pencil brushwork. Now this is a soft charcoal, so this is going to show up even darker. I don't know if you can see that on this phone, but on this camera, it's not a brilliant camera. But uh, so I'm now going to hit it harder with an even darker tone. But not everywhere. I'm, I'm leaving the reflective light. I'm going to not go right across there, I'm going to take it to about there and then lighten my stroke a little bit. So I want to blend it back. And this is not blended properly yet, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. And again, we'll brush. So it's always a combination of Pencil work and brush work, pencil work and brush work, pencil work and brush work. <laughs> now again we'll take a bit of that reflective light out. <laughs> and brush the shadow underneath as well. a bit ropey around here so we will get rid of some of this. I didn't plan on doing a neat job but while we're here we may as well. I'm taking some of those rough lines that I put in at the beginning. They're not coming out very well to be honest but not great. a blending stump as well. So a blending stump is basically like paper, I think. If it's paper, just sort of compressed. So again, if I rub the area where uh, it wasn't blended very well, so just keep rubbing it in little circular motions. And eventually, just from using your blending stump, the values start to merge so 
artist. The most artist. We learn this by I I learned this. I never knew what one of these things were. I, I learned it from YouTube. Literally, I've never used a blending stump in my life. <laughs> Until I watched it on YouTube. So there we go, that's the basic shade. Again, you could push that even further. You could you could go even darker with the darks and a bit of light and pull a bit more light out. You, but you could go on forever. You get to a stage where you think, right, I'm not improving it, I'm not doing any. I don't really want to do anything else on it, that's good enough. So, you can incorporate that in your pictures. You know, this picture with Mike Tyson. Obviously, I've gone really dark underneath where the shadow areas are. And then all I've done, I've used my blending stump to pull up and blend up. So as it increases, as I pull it further up towards the light areas, which are going to be on his chest, in the middle of his chest, or above his chest up here. I'm just doing circular, circular motions. <laughs> and then leaving that area there light. So a lot of these values on his face I did with a blending stump I didn't do it with a pencil you know using a pencil on the face that the texture is going to be harsh it's going to be quite difficult to create a nice smooth finish so what I did use and even I did use this blending stump and now we can take a little bit of these Dark areas out just around his abdominals and maybe a little bit on the top of his chest. <laughs> just where the light is going to be catching these areas. This is a putty kneading eraser, so you can format and shape it however you want. It's, it don't, they don't come this colour, they come like a grey colour, but obviously I've used it that much. It's literally just caked in charcoal. That is all charcoal, but it still works really well. Just to take out any light areas. And that's what I did on this one. This one, I actually went over all this quite dark and then I pulled the lights out. I could go over it again now and show you how it's done. So, using the block, you basically, I could darken these values right up and take them back out. Which... I think makes it more dramatic. So you might not be able to see that, but I have darkened the values up a little bit. And then when I take them back out again, it leaves some of that graininess on the paper. So again, all I'm doing is pushing and pulling the lights, push the darks dark, and then pull some lights back out again. dramatic image of dark next to light which I is one of my favourite things about art you know how do you create these images well it's extreme light next to extreme dark that's, that's how I create images like that and the same with this one. It's a nice image, somebody looking up. But again, I've, I've gone oh, nice and dark with it. And again, I could go over it again, but I'm not going to like that from where it is. And then all I did was use my kneading eraser and I used my orbital eraser just in, just in small areas like the top of the lip, top of the just picked out a couple of highlight areas. 
it just pops from the page. Makes it look quite good. I think so anyway. When I'm drawing a picture, I always start, I usually start. Right folks, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you got something out of it, if you like, share and subscribe, it'll help my channel. And I'll see you on the next one.